Mixtapes and DVDs is my era Facts. We did it better yep. Pelly Pelly Leathers Facts. ACG Boots uh. We 80s babies Ooh. In early 90s When it got grimy I was out of this world You could not find me Unless you check the lobby Hustling was my hobby Damn. We was lobby boys yep. Before Jim Jones You could catch me at Harlem Eating Jim Bones uh. Mixtapes and DVDs is my era Facts. We did it better yep. Pelly Pelly Leathers Facts. ACG Boots uh. We 80s babies Ooh. In early 90s When it got grimy I was out of this world You could not find me Unless you check the lobby Hustling was my hobby Damn. We was lobby boys yep. Before Jim Jones You could catch me at Harlem Eating Jim Bones uh. Now in the DVD era, Mano had somewhat of a reputation of putting the hand of God on other rappers. Now Mano would have physical altercations with Bunky S.A., Little C's, and Young Berg, aka Hitmaker. Now Mano would go to Instagram and post a picture with Young Berg showing that they squashed their beef. And Little C's was also on Mano platform, The Kitchen Talk, showing that they squashed their beef as well. Now another well-documented physical altercation Mano had was with legend from Queensbridge, Tragedy Gaddafi. Now, if you're not familiar with Tragedy Gaddafi, he's a producer and rapper from Queensbridge. He was part of the Juice Crew and very legendary, one of the first Queens rapper to make it. And he's responsible for CNN. He put CNN, Capone, and Noriega together, and he got them their first deal. Now, according to Mano, he says he don't remember where he met Tragedy yet, but when he spoke to Tragedy, Tragedy told him, like, look, man, I can get you a mixtape deal for your mixtapes. So Mano agreed, like, all right, let's do it. Now, around this time, they were in contact heavy, and they would meet up in front of Juniors when they needed to speak. And finally, you know, Tragedy came through with the contract for Mano for his mixtape deal. And Mano said he even signed the deal outside of Juniors in the street. Now, supposedly, Mano was supposed to receive $5,000 from this mixtape deal that he signed through Tragedy and he's supposed to receive it a week or two after he signed the contract. Now after a week or two passed, he said he still ain't hear nothing from Tragedy. So Mano started to call Tragedy phone and he would call him over and over but he wasn't getting no response. So Mano said he said to himself like I know what this is, I signed that deal through him. He took that money and he ran off with it and did whatever he did with it. So the next time Mano would see Tragedy would be in a T.I.P. concert. Now Mano's with Little Kim and a bunch of his homeboys. Now while he's at the party, he hears the DJ shout Tragedy Gaddafi out and then he runs into him. Now when Mano runs into him, Gaddafi said, yo man, I was looking for you. Now, Mano said once he said that, he already knew he was guilty. He wasn't picking up his calls. And he said, when somebody owe you money, the first thing they always say is, I was looking for you. But he's like, how could you be looking for me when my number never changed? And I was calling you, reaching out to you. He said, so at that point, he just put hands on Gaddafi. But Gaddafi remembers the situation a little differently. He says, for one, he didn't beat Mano out of his money. And for two, he could have communicated with Mano a little more, being that he owed him the 5K. Now, third of all, he said he felt like that's something that Mano wanted to do anyway. And Traj also says that Mano didn't fight him one-on-one, -on -one, and he was jumped by seven or eight people, and he admit he got caught slipping. Now, jump in the comment section and let me know what y'all feel. Do y'all feel like Mano jumped the gun by jumping Gaddafi when he seen him? Or he should have gave him more time to produce the 5K and listen to why he didn't have the 5K? Now, playing devil's advocate, anything could have happened. Gaddafi could have took the contract back. And the label that was trying to do the mixtape deal for Mano could have changed their mind about doing the deal. Or it could have took a little bit more time for them to get the money. You get what I'm saying? That could have been the reason why Gaddafi wasn't answering his phone. Because he knew he ain't had the money. And he told Mano a week or two. You get what I'm saying? And he even admitted he could have communicated with Mano a little better. So tell me what y'all think. Do y'all think Gaddafi just deaded Mano on his money because he knew Mano didn't really know the game like that. He just came home from jail. He found it like an opportunity to get over on somebody. And from what I'm hearing, he got a history of doing this to artists. Let me know what y'all think. But anyway, tell a friend to tell a friend about my page if you enjoy these old hip-hop stories. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.